Good evening. It's good to be with you for evening devotions once again tonight. Tonight I'm wearing one of my Thrive in Action Team shirts. Uh, I don't know how many of these shirts I have, but I have a lot, mostly because they're super comfortable. Um, the material that they use, the type of shirt, is uh, is great for wearing on a nice warm day. Uh, it is comfortable to sleep in. Um, maybe just work around the house. Uh, it's just a good, uh, good quality shirt. But uh, sometimes when I wear it in public, I have to be very conscious of how I act because I'm wearing this sh shirt that has a cross on it and it says, live generously. Well, I would look kind of like a jerk if I wore this shirt and I was expecting other people to live generously towards me and I was unwilling to live generously toward them. And it has this big heart on it too. Like this is the way that I show God's love in Christ. It's by living generously, by living sacrificially. If we think about some of the things we were talking about last week, or last night in John, uh, 1 John chapter 4. And tonight's uh, reading, tonight's devotion, follows on those heels of what John was saying about love and uh, the type of love that God has for us, the type of love that Jesus shows us by giving up of himself. He continues that thought in, uh, in verses uh, 11 through 16 that we're going to look at tonight in 1 John 4. So uh, he starts off with this, Beloved, those people who are loved by God, loved by John, the ones who are in this relationship of love together in Christ. He says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Now this so loved God might bring up a, uh, a memory in your brain, like, uh, like John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world. Now there's another way of saying that, the way that uh, John says it in chapter 3, verse 1. He says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. That's the meaning of the word so. Not, uh, not in um, multitude, but in manner. Uh, behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. If you remember when I sang that for uh, that devotion on First uh, John 3 verse 1. The idea that this is the way God shows his love or God has shown us his love by pointing us to his son's death and resurrection for us, his sacrifice for us, by coming between us and the Father, by being that atoning sacrifice for our sins. When we know that, when we have faith in that, when that knowledge and faith is formed in unity and changes us, what comes out is love for one another. Living generously, in a sense, toward one another. Showing each other that type of love. He goes on, No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us. And his love is perfected in us. And so what he's really saying, we haven't seen God in his fullness of glory. We know that we have seen Jesus uh, as he is true God, and yet he didn't appear to the disciples, the people who lived during Jesus' time in his fullness of glory. But uh, John writes about this in, uh, in his gospel, um, and he says this kind of exact same thing in John 1 verse 18. He says, No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. He's saying Jesus, who is currently at the Father's side after ascending to the Father. John's writing this post Jesus' ascension for sure. He's saying Jesus has come down for us, to us, to make God known. And we've seen the works of Jesus, and we've seen what God's love looks like. And so, in a sense, we've seen the Father. And others have also seen how God's character, the way he works with us, um, they've seen that too. And if we've never seen the Father with our own eyes, 
Well, we've seen how Jesus is at work in his church, in the world, through us as his people. And so that's the one way that others see God. It's through the love that he builds through us. And by this we know that we then abide in him, that we are in Christ and he in us because he has given us of his spirit, the Holy Spirit, who he has poured out on us generously. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. And so we, as God's people, are able to know God's love completely in this truth. And whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. And John concludes with this. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. I was reading something that uh, where Martin Luther kind of uh, collected all these uh, ideas of God's love, and he says, God's love doesn't come to us because of our works or the, the love that we show others. God's love comes to us because of his love. And, you know, it almost sounds like circular reasoning, but if God is complete love in himself, in the way that he comes to us through Christ, then we can't deny that his love is ours. And then we abide, we live, we dwell in that love. We abide and we live and we dwell in him that life of generosity that comes to others through us. That's God's love. Because we dwell in him and with him. That's the meaning of abide, being at one with God. That love that he has perfected in us. Sometimes hard for us to love that way. And that's why the love that John's pointing to here doesn't point out our works. He says, though, however, you're going to love when you are in Christ. You'll see the marks of the, the kingdom coming through you, but the marks aren't the point of the love, or they're, they're not the way that you see, okay, God's happy with me. No, nope. just because he loves. That's who God is. We're thankful that we get to abide in him. What a blessing to know that we're in God's love every day. That's a place where we can dwell secure. We're going to sing about that love tonight in our hymn. It's number 585 in the Lutheran service book. It's called Lord Jesus Christ with us abide. It's an evening hymn uh, in a sense. Uh, it looks at how God comes to us to dwell with us and in us and through us and comforts us and gives us the knowledge of how he is continuing to give us hearts of love. So let's sing 585. We're going to sing stanzas 1, 3, and 6 tonight. Lord Jesus Christ, with us abide. For round us falls the eventide. O oh, let your word, that saving light, Shine forth undimmed into the night. To hope grown dim, to hearts turned cold, Speak tongues of fire and make us bold. To shine your word of saving grace Into each dark and loveless place. Stay with us, Lord, and keep us true. Preserve our faith our whole life through. Your word alone our heart's defense the church's glorious confidence. Let's pray. God, you are love. And that is hard for us to take in at times. 
There are so many things that the world and our sinful nature and Satan tried to do to tear us away from that love or get us to doubt that love. But when we come back to Christ, when we see Jesus, because you have made him known to us, when we come back to your word and see how Jesus is the central point of your entire scripture, then we understand how you love, how you call us, how you abide with us. God, remain with us as we rest in you tonight. Remain with us until we remain with you into eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Rest in the abiding peace of Jesus. Amen.